Birgit Birvis from uh, the Freie Hansestadt Bremen. Uh, and you who were present this uh, morning, you uh, maybe remember that there was a, a discussion and a question about uh, ITS uh, in port. So I don't know if you will um, touch upon that, but uh, you have the chance at least because you will present sustainable operation of port infrastructure. So um, then we will uh, try to get Birgit uh, online and uh, we hope that you can share uh, your slides. Perfect. We can see and then we should just... Are you with us, Birgit? Uh, I can hear you. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. yes. Thank I you. Do. So, uh, yes, I, I heard Marcus' question and um, during the, my lunch, uh, I asked my colleagues from the Bremischer Hafen Eisenbahn, and um, it is a problem uh, also in Bremen. And we are working just now um, together with um, the terminal operators um, to yeah, get a better, a better ITS solution between the Bremischer Hafen Eisenbahn and the terminal. Um, I don't not exactly how the um, yes. The information is um, together with the, the German railway. So I don't know if uh, that's the question or the answer on the question. No, I think no. Uh, that, that gave some background. So thank you. Um, does um, Stefan or Adina or Agneta will say something to the question? Uh, we, we will uh, ask the Agneta, we will uh, make her unmute here to see if she can respond today. Agneta, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Uh, we have integrated uh, with, our, with two of our train operators. So um, we have the information. Um, we know when the train is coming, what, car, what uh, trailers are on the train and where it's going out, which, with uh, which ferry it's booked, and the same on the other way. When it arrives with the ferries, we uh, we know which train it's going to leave with. But it is still a manual operation when lifting and, and operating uh, the train. But we do have the information uh, what cargo is coming in and where it's going. Okay, thank you. Um, Yes, please, please continue, Birgit, with your presentation. Thank you. I want to tell you what we have done within the Swiftly Green project from the port point of view. Um, together with uh, my colleagues from Trelleborg and Hamburg, we developed the best practice guide greening of port operations as part of the toolbox. And with this guide, we want to support the continuous dissemination and implementation of green and efficient transport solutions along the Scandinavian Mediterranean corridor from the ports. As important um, intermodal hubs and main entrance and exit points for huge transport volumes, more than 20 ports belong to the ScanMed corridor and link maritime transport with all other transport modes. These ports um, play a crucial role as regards the green transport corridor. But on the other side, ports are large energy consumers and producers of um, emissions. Together with its partners of port operating logistics and the surrounding industrial companies, ports can um, have significant influence in order to make transport corridors greener. So the best practice guide presents uh, state-of-the-art examples for greening measures, both, both huge port planning strategy as well as small technical solutions for specific problems. And deeper analysis of the diverse me measures show that ports are able to play an important role and make a significant contribution to the greening if they plan any port development carefully and in harmony with their residents and the surrounding nature. If they implement and expand their own renewable energy production, if they reduce their energy consumption and emission, and if they set in incentives for greener transport to their customers. 
in order to give you a short uh, impression from the guide, I want to show you a short selection um, from each of these fields. The Green Ports Initiative and, uh, from Bremen and Bremerhaven and the Vision 2010-2015 from Trelleborg are excellent cases in terms of port developments in harmony with residents and nature. The port of Trelleborg is situated in the middle of the city and is Scandinavia's largest rural port. The development in this situation must be dealt carefully. Under these circumstances, the port and the municipality decided to initiate a major change when it became evident that transport bottlenecks and a growing number of customers requesting the option of bringing in modern, larger, and more ecological ships. The port set out to increase its capacities as part of the new vision, vision 20. 10 to 2015. It was established that the port and the city must develop in harmony in order to become the Baltic Sea most climate smart port. The port of Bremerhaven is located next to the Wadden Sea National Park, which has been listed as UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2009. And port development around this highly sensitive Wadden Sea is one of the biggest challenges faced by Bremen Ports Green Ports Initiative. Starting already in September 2009, the port management published a brochure entitled Green Ports, and this master plan details what the industry and the public sector have already undertaken and will undertake to maintain and rise the standards of marine environmental protection. By adapting the Green Ports philosophy, the Ports has committed itself to acting responsible and demonstrate that economic and ecological interests can go hand in hand. Moreover, the Ports started to implement their own renewable energy production. Today, you can see a systematic use of solar and wind power production within our Ports. There are i.e. three combined heat and power production plants in Bremerhaven, Hamburg and Wilhelmshaven with a total terminal output of 2.3 megawatt and electrical output of 1,970 kilowatt. And due to two additional wood chip heating plants, an output of more than 1,500 kilowatt are generated. That means that in one year, these heating supplies approximately 4 million kilowatt hours by consuming 1,500 1, tons of waste wood. And the wooden dunnage is used uh, normally in containers to protect large and unwieldy machineries. And after discharging and stripping, this could be not uh, reused in the past uh, due to the new heating plants, um, this becomes fuel for the new system and no longer waste. The, the reduction of energy consumption and emission could be reached by development of new power station for inland barges uh, through energy supply stations and new energy vehicles and the uh, overall smart port energy concept. So inland waterways usually use diesel generators whilst they are burst in order to run the electrical devices on board. This causes huge amount of both greenhouse gas emissions and noise while the vessel is burst. With the new developed power stations for inland barges, this problem could be solved and around 35 liters of diesel per day can be saved for each vessel, which means, which means also a cost reduction of almost 80% for the shippers while reducing the greenhouse gas and fine dust emission significantly. At the same time, this system provided a solution for the problem of varying water levels. Power connections are normally installed on tall masts and can often only be accessed by using a ladder, which might be a problem for a shipper. In order to tackle the problem, Bremen Ports developed a switch box placed on a float. The new inland power barge system is located on a ponton, which you can see on the left side on the slide. 
uh, which uses two pillars and makes the system working regardless of water level. If the water comes up, the ponton comes up together with the water. The shippers can connect to the power at any, uh, at any time and using by using special keys without any, uh, any other technical support. As the cleanest burning fossil fuel, which produces less emissions and pollutants than either coal or oil, LNG is an actual topic in all of our ports. Both LNG bunkering infrastructure, filling station and port vehicles came in use during the last years or under construction, i.e. in Stockholm, Trelleborg, Hamburg and Bremerhaven. And in the middle you can see a picture of the first hopper barge uh, driven with LNG, which came in use um, by the end of this no, last year in Bremerhaven. With the smart port energy concept in the Hamburg Port Authority aims to accelerate the use of re renewable energy at the port of Hamburg. The three main fields of this cooperation focus on the use of renewable energies and an increase in energy efficiency and the promotion of innovative and eco-friendly mobility. And last but not least, um, greening incentives for customers can be i.e. set by uh, the environmental ship index. Together with uh, other European ports, uh, the ports of Hamburg and Bremerhaven developed this environmental ship index and the ESI evaluates the amount of NOx and SOx that is released by a ship and includes it in a, a reporting scheme on the greenhouse gas emissions of the ship. And based on these easy points, ports can offer incentives like port call discounts for ships, which perform better than legally required. And here you can see the Morning Linda, which was the first winner of the Green Ports Award in 2013, the first one who gained from the easy system. As results of our report, CAFI contributes the best practice guide greening of port operations as part of the overall Swifty Green toolbox. And within the best practice guide, other ports along the ScanMate corridor, as well as ports on other 10T corridors, can find uh, a lot of concrete state of the art examples. The guide can be downloaded from the Swifty Green homepage. Looks like this and provides and disseminates new experience, experiences and fresh incentives to other ports on the corridor, even in overall Europe, and might be used as a reference for future investment funding, also by the European Union. So that's it. Thank you for your attention.